Okay, enough, 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 enough. Cricket stomping fun behind the woodshed here. It's to stomp them out. We gotta stop this cricket stuff. Gotta get moving. Gotta get stuff done. Gotta get used to doing some things. Don't have to put ourselves in jeopardy. We just have to get out there and start learning how it gets done. Because if we don't, someone else is doing it against us. This is BTWRLM273. I don't have a whole lot of time today with all the tabs I've got. I've got to get right to it. But I uh, do want to thank those of you that have been contributing to freedomsnetwork.com and uh, would like to ask you again for more donations to keep that censorship-free network going so it doesn't bite the dust like a lot of the others. It doesn't turn into be what other uh, you see other social media. They are, are funneling everybody through certain registration requirements. And so there's a you're just watching it develop, as I've been suggesting to you over the decade or so that I've been able to get to you uh, on, the, on the Internet and through the radio. Those of you that are not quite sure where we're at, we can, you can go find uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash rlmradio.xyz. Just type in rlmradio.xyz. That'll get you to a player. And uh, last week, a comment made on YouTube. Uh, when you're choosing your battle, you're not picking a fight. I thought that was uh, an insightful thing. In other words, uh, you guys have a lot of thoughts in your mind that I wish sometimes come to me, but it don't come to me. So I wanted to call that out. Thank you very much. That was uh, normalizing ignorance. That was the YouTube, YouTube mirroring site for us. I appreciate all that help. And again, getting the word out just to get people to know what, what has to happen is I do every week. This is not that hard. This is not, I don't know why the excuses get made. I don't know why I become an exception somehow. Uh, the broadcast name behind the woodshed was pretty much foretold what would be happening, and I was hoping against that. But if you also look, look very carefully, that says, is it where you open a can of whoop ass? I don't do it. You're supposed to be doing it. That's us. And so I want to remind you real quickly as I move through this uh, today, I really got an interesting thing. I think I want to, at this point, I think I'm going to call it fanciful or future. You decide. Uh, hopefully I get to the end of the broadcast here. I'm going to be developing some things that came in the news, that came in the notice over time. It's all been pulling together. And uh, we want to know, you know, the science fiction stuff. Is it is it fanciful or is it actually going to be reality? And these people that are working this thing against you are bringing their reality. They have the plan. Whether we know about it, whether you want to call it deep state, dark state, whatever. It, they, it doesn't matter. There's some, there's an energy and intention in the world that people have to make uh, make out or they get ruled by it. Uh, we may claim utopia, there is no rulers, but there are. And we got to address that problem. But I, I offered a while back a, a report that says you have a right to comment uh, into something that you all are, don't like in GMOs, or you'd like at least minimum, whether or not you like them or not, you'd like to know that you're in your food. I, I offered you a regulatory comment period time to comment that uh, will be ending on J June 3rd. I want to remind you, if you have another two days, that now it's so late administratively, so you understand how this process works. On the administrative communications, you have to have things at their office on the afternoon of the day that it's required. If it's judicial, you can do... That date is determined by the t time it was deposited in the mail. Administratively, it's you have to have it in their hands by the day due date of the comment period in this case. Now remember, I talked about the Dark Act. I have a link for you. It will be on the Blogcaster. Uh, this is from a group called GMO Free. They're actually saying we want to know about the GMOs in our food, and there's a labeling uh, labeling a a rule coming up. And remember, that was where they were. Uh, going to give you the label, and I told you you should make a comment against the promotion of GMO with the face and the winking eye and the B and the E. Remember all that and the smiley face? Uh, if you don't want to start seeing promotions about genetically modified or, uh, uh, organisms in your food, you need to make get involved. I don't understand why this is such a – you can do any of this anywhere. You, at any time you say, I might be in, in the United States of America. I want to be uh, notified of GMOs, and you should be sending from anywhere in the world a note and a comment, and I suggest you probably have to go to the website now uh, or by email because you're going to have to have that in before the, fifth, I think, 5 o'clock at the time you're supposed to. You have to go read what it's supposed to be about, and you need to make a comment. I have a website link. It throws out, throws out everything you need to know real quick. And it's again on the uh, on the third of July. Uh, I don't know why this is uh, 
I'm just reminding you, and I don't, I didn't get any feedback that anybody did it, but this is one of those things I look at. I see, I see the crickets. I don't care how much whining and sniveling I hear. I see crickets. And it just be, that's why be, what I hear becomes whining and sniveling. You can at least do this stuff. It doesn't matter where you are. If you want to be fully disclosed at what's going on in your feed system, you need to be able to start making uh, substantive, on-point, factual, enforced evidentiary comments. It's not that hard. I've got to get moving here quick. Uh, ack, ack, ah. Here it comes, folks, for those of you that are going to be uh, eating meat. New analysis shows superbugs lurking in three-fourths of United States supermarket meat. Three-fourths. Nearly 80% of the supermarket meat was found to have antibiotic-resistant bacteria, also known as superbugs. They were telling this was coming. Well, here they are. And here's the point about this. It's uh, Superbugs is still in your meat, no matter what they're doing to it. And uh, the problem here is that you certainly always have to cook your meat uh, thoroughly, but you don't want to cut yourself while you're messing with this stuff either. It's almost to like toxic, and I almost think this is a plan. They don't want you eating meat. And all we can, uh, I'm not going to go through all that. You all, uh, it's not just about vegetarianism. It has to do with the sustainable agenda, the governance. Uh, but uh, those of you that are working with meat, uh, here it is. The, these antibiotic-resistant nature will find a way. Uh, we've heard the microphage and cholera will seek out DNA to help improve. It'll adapt. It, it changes its genetics. It actually takes in DNA to change itself. These superbugs, so-called, do the same thing. And this is the year again. You don't uh, you don't respond. You don't con contact your uh, uh, these regulatory agencies that literally rule your life. You think there's no rulers? Well, they're there. And the way you stop them is you shut down their their lack of support and their support for the bottom line in the industry, which is the bottom line. Uh, that's how you get. And then you have to find out as we're as people are getting involved, they start finding out what the real thing is. You go through these agencies, and they rely on so-called experts, and those experts are wrong. You have to attack their first, at least one option. Uh, so moving on, FDA approves first cannabis-based drug. Uh, those of you that are in cannabis, I keep telling you to make your comments. I keep telling you how to do this, how to involve yourself. No threats, no no reasons not to no reasons not to get involved, not to have a say, not to throw your two cents in. For everyone's got a smart, a really good idea. Not smart, but intelligent. You need to have that put forth. You'd be surprised because no one responds. You may be the, the, the genius in the bunch that shows up in, uh, not the bananas, the, the bunch that goes in and actually puts a, a, a stick in their spoke because no one else does. And it's not that hard. We, we're really literally doing this all the time. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration approved a cannabis-based drug for the first time. Uh, the agency said Epidolix uh, was recommended for approval by an advisory committee. Remember I told you about those advisory committees? Those are felonies uh, against you the way they end up working them. In April, and the agency had uh, until this week to make a decision. The agency had a decision to make. Well, you had a right to go in there. Uh, they are now making it. The, the statement that I found, I fixed on was that th this was a, is an important medical advance, says the FDA commissioner. Well, I've told you about how to address this, folks, how to bring this uh, nonsense out and bring it into the open so they can't really start doing this. They uh, will tell you that there's no medical use. Well, how is the FDA? I said you can use one agency against the other. How is the FDA coming out and saying this is an important medical advance when there is no medical use? You have the proof right in one agency to go attack the other. At least cause the question. All you have to do is mention this in a writing, in the right, proper place and time, or create the proper place. Why isn't that hold so much? I guess that's what gets me frustrated. So I want to, my response to this is to remind me uh, through the Twitter about that statement, just that little statement in the whole story. That now the FDA sees a medical importance, and the reason why it's medical importance is because they give it, privatize a public, uh, I mean a, a natural substance to bottom line, and that's okay now? And then uh, understood otherwise as a Schedule One no medical use uh, material? Are you kidding me? Uh, so tell me again, and uh, I'm going to now send this Twitter right to the U.S. FDA. Uh, so tell me again why it's an important medical advance when pharma finally catches on, but crime when done by people needing and already needing and already using CBD for the same purpose. I think is an on-point point that you need to make in a statement. Why can't any of you that are interested in this just do that for yourself and the rest of everybody? Uh, this 
uh, I'm again quoting this statement. This is an I'm only attaching this whole concept wrapped around the FDA acknowledgement that this is an important medical advance on a substance that they claim has no medical use. Not only have they found it's a medical use, they found that they can actually make it in a product. And they commercialize that. See how they do that? I keep telling you, keep holding it in the production side, you're going to be a whole lot better. You get rid of the criminalization. Stop legalizing this. They want to make commerce out of it? Well, that's up to them. That's not what I'm talking about. But here you are. They claim it's an important medical advance. You know that uh, they've been saying that you can't use your stuff or grow it privately or have to be regulated because there's no medical importance. And this FDA official just said there was. Who's been lying to whom? You know, who's been crickets to not call it out? My frustration with all of y'all. Uh, and then with me for suggesting I'm some kind of uh, mind that uh, oh, doesn't exist normally in the world. And I'm telling you that the mind I have is the one that we never should have le left from ourselves. That was our obligation and duty. Court order, another topic I usually, I've been covered in the past. Want to point out some things. Uh, court order, con controversial pipeline to halt construction over West Virginia streams and wetlands. It came out. Uh, the United States Federal Energy Regulatory Commission said in a document on Monday that the EQT uh, midstream partners would halt work on the parts of the controversial Mountain Valley Pipeline. Cro they, that crossed 591 streams and wetlands in the state. Now, go through this story. I'm bringing this up because this is another thing where people are making comment to. In this case, the comment was sufficient. The proper comment was made by the uh, eco-terrorists uh, uh, th th that they are. Uh, environmental group of Sierra Club argued the halt of construction, saying that the construction timelines proposed by the pipeline's maker went beyond the time allowed by the general permit. So you start understanding what the dynamic is, and uh, and they had to say, I'm showing you how this goes. They went in there and they stopped. They, they petitioned to get this thing stopped. They got the pipeline stopped because there was an anomaly in the process. This is all I was asking the people at DAFL to do. Now, I don't see this, I see this as a stalling tactic because when you see what's underneath this, they have nothing else other than it didn't match the, match the guidelines. So those things need to be, those will need to be adjusted. The point is that there's a cause and effect of things and if you are complaining all the time that things happening against what your interests are, it's because you've been crickets. And here's the examples in these last three articles that tell you that you can get involved and you need to get involved. I don't like that we are involved. I don't like that we have to, but that's the world we live in right now. And if we don't, these other things come along and they cause your life to be uh, painful. Punishment, pains, penalties, and uh, exactions of every kind, that kind of thing. Taxes, secretly uh, played on you. If you have property, you're going to pay property tax because none of you know how to do what I tell you about going to the patent. That You don't know how to uh, identify the, the, the commercial constraint upon you and you just give in to it. You call what I understand to be oh, some kind of a, a unknowable knowledge, and I don't have anything to do with it. It's an excuse. Uh, anyway, so I get uh, kind of angry about this a little bit as I start thinking more about that. This stuff can be addressed. Now, the Sierra Club, Club has gotten this thing stopped. Uh, I think it's, it's just a delay tactic because of what's underneath it. When you read the article, I won't go through it. Uh, the point will be better. I want to get to the point better that if, if it is – this is a public need, this, this transportation of energy uh, fluids. Uh, and I told you that this, that I won't cover this again like I did before in the DAPL. I explained all this thing to you. But uh, this becomes more of a, a, the substantive problem when you're looking at waters and streams is whether or not the placement is correct. And I was talking with uh, Vince uh, on this uh, through a Twitter quickly, and he pointed out to me an interesting little pipeline inspections condition because I was telling you that the main problem seems to be, and we had a recent pipeline break, was it's possible, uh, the, with Vince telling us before about how he was, you know, he worked on the pipelines and watched how they were laid and all that, or helped do that, or whatever his business was to do that, or his job, uh, he said that they're not necessarily laid, the pipes aren't laid correctly relative to how they're supposed to be. And so I said, well, that would be a place where you'd jump in and you'd show that even though they're using state of the art, then the inspections are not the laying uh, the the they need a third party witness to whether or not they're being done. Well, he Vince sent me off a, a thing about inspections after the fact, and I found a very interesting right in one of the very uh, initial statements on it was what the promotion of the inspectors is, and it says our inspector inspections are tailored to your piping and risk mediation programs. Our inspections are tailored to your piping and risk risk. Mitigation programs. 
That's what I was talking about you set up in the comments uh, period. You argue that they're, what they're doing may be state-of-the-art, but there's some deficiencies. And so you see the industry inspection is tailored to the mitigation that's been built up in the process, in the due process that was provided, when everyone came together to show what was needed. And it focuses on this point about the mitigation measures, the impact measures. And if you have a problem with the pipes being laid, it doesn't matter that you're going to inspect after if they're going to eventually break. you got a problem with the laying of the pipe. At any rate, so here's another point where you see how this thing works. If you want to protect your water and things, you want to make sure that your your, your pipes are laid right, at least in the minimum. And the, 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 as we talked about the rest of it, the, the, that there's uh, bonds and things to put out to protect against some of these things. Uh, some of the damages and the impact so that it actually gets taken care of. It's much better than a, a time frame problem that the Sierra Club's focused on. Remember, I'm not too uh, keen with these guys. These are uh, these people are the stocking, uh, the, these are the stakeholders using stocking horses. And that that's a problem. That's a, a, an agenda working right underfoot. When I see the answers are there for people who take it earnestly in to understand it, uh, that they can actually get something done properly. And I uh, I'm of the experience that that does happen. When you engage yourself in the right ways and you find out what the real reality of it is and you deal with the human, if I call it the human factor here, uh, there, there's real people you have to deal with. And you work out how that's all going to work in this overblown system that's kind of gotten away with a lot. Uh, you have to work that battlefield. You work that out. And now you get yourself in and you start doing only what you need to do in the right times. Uh, so here's another example. Uh, going right through this, um, let's go on. These people that we're up against, uh, it, it, they're all fo seem to be focused in one area. That was a report I was going to read. It's already been out for a little while. I want to bring it up in context of what I'm going to talk today here. A uh, study confirms most psychopaths live in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is where all these rules are coming out of. This is where all the central hub of a government is. This is where the, the, the district is not a state. This is all the stuff that's is like the woe of the world for us. It's the woe of the world, literally. Uh, all the psychopaths are, are, there's a study that says that they're there, and, and they're consistently... High measure, wherever you look, high measures of psychopaths, wherever you find lawyers, attorneys, bar members. Oh, that's, that's the global uh, so-called rule O law structure. It's global. And so these are, again, we don't, you think we're calling them names. No, there's a study that says they're shack psychopaths. And they run this place. And if you be quiet, they run this place. Uh, did you get that? So I don't want to, I mean I could go on we could laugh about this or yeah we could do all the jokes but it's not this is a serious matter. What's interesting on this study they actually said that those uh, beauticians uh, high level beauticians made the chart about being uh, the propensity for psychopathy. I found that fascinating. Uh so you uh, you'll get this link you can read it you may have found it already. Uh, but just remember that we're dealing with psychopaths uh high like uh, we're dealing with a high probability uh, and, and ratio of psychopaths when we're dealing in these areas. Remember, they work with no moral compass. So you're, you got to know that's the battlefield. And you got to be anticipating all these problems. You know, these psychopaths don't care about anything moral to, and foundational law by some principle hot better than we are. And we know that. We, we talk about the lawyers and the psychopathy within that whole branch, of the whole group of people. And folks, I don't know where you're going to go in the United States. You're going to find the Bar Association, an agency of the states. They are the government. Well, I've read, I've done all this study before. So here we go to the Supreme Court decisions and kind of start showing that you can't even rely on it. And that's the best we can do in this country, it sends. They'll, they'll tell you. And it, it, it is that way because you, you're crickets about all this stuff. And I'm not judging anybody. I'm saying we have been brought up to be crickets. And I'm telling you, you have to break that in yourself. And you have to become responsible somewhere. And again, thank you, normalization of ignorance. Choosing your battle is not picking a fight. But you have to pick, you have to pick that. You have to choose where you're going to weigh in because otherwise it, that's a man down there, if you will. Uh, in a blow to public sector unions, Supreme Court overturns 40-year-old precedent. What I found interesting about this wasn't about the unions and the politics and all this other stuff that is affecting us. It is a problem. They, they're telling you they overturned a 40-year-old precedent. They actually flipped it over to what I don't know why they changed in the first place, but they flipped it back. Now, this is your so-called law. Not rule of man, but law. And then they find out that this decision was made by a 5-4 to four decision by the Supreme Court of the United States 
government. That means one man decided this. It's not ruled. Uh, it's not the law uh, ruled by law. This is ruled by one man here. One man changed this. Uh, changed this verdict to become a flip. Well, then I found it interesting as well. And you, I think these are all telling us things. Maybe you don't find the value in it. Maybe I'm the only one that sees this stuff and it thinks and it, I make it up that it matters. But I think these are little clues here and there uh, that the case name was Janus. Versus A F S C M E. Janus V. Well, Janus was the two faced God, wasn't it? Look both directions, right? Tell you the truth or lie to you, whatever, right? And this is what they tell us happened. Forty year old precedents flopped over. What happened before was law is no longer the law, folks. And they tell us this is the best we got. And I want to remind you, don't remember don't forget what Scalia said. You came to us for the answer. That's a clue. And I also told you why I started, that fortified me to focus on what I do, which is to have caused these courts to be I irrelevant, the, the people in the courts, the judges, the officers, to be irrelevant to your remedy. So, here, okay, so they overturned, they flipped something completely out of what it used to be, back over to something I thought it should have been, uh, maybe not even for the reasons they did it, but it, the case was Janus. And I thought that was perfect for what your system is all about and that we've allowed that. Uh, going on to another Supreme Court uh, issue I've talked about, I want to bring on it again, and I'm going to take a little bit more time on this one. But uh, like I, I do want to get to the end of this uh, this issue because that's a little more fun for us. It really is fun for me and, and, and kind of more into the ideas of I'd like to get into or at least contemplate about things and what's going on around what we do. Uh, but this course, uh, Supreme Court throws out a ruling against a florist who refused to serve same-sex couples. Okay, so these psychopaths that represent all this are attempting, they, they, they try to get an agenda to move as they want to see. Remember, the bar associations, the House Rules Delegation uh, findings were they will impose a sustainable development or what we call Agenda 21 where where uh, proper. Well, the properness is only where you don't see it. Where appropriate, they said. Uh, where appropriate is where you don't catch them. And so all this stuff starts to come down, and I've been, I've talked, I, an, I analyzed this very condition, and I used the very same standard that I applied to those before about the florist, any uh, business refusing services to same-sex couple based on discrimination. Those of you that have been listening, what was the basis for the actual intent of the law? Do you remember? You remember, it's the same. It ends up being the same, but a little more obscured in in this case. In fact, this court case was so obscured in all the reports, I didn't even know what the court case name was. I didn't know the state. I didn't know anything. Couldn't analyze anybody. And I'm gonna have to say outwardly, thank you to the to the independent out of UK. They gave you most of the who, what, why, where, and when, and I was able to go from there. The Supreme Court has said it will not renew, review a case involving a florist. Not a baker, not a sale of guns, but a florist who allegedly discriminated against a same-sex couple ordering a lower Washington court visit, revisit the case. The state Supreme Court previously ruled that Arlene's Flowers Incorporated had discriminated against the couple by refusing to create the floral arrangements for their wedding. But the justices threw out that decision, sending the case back to be redetermined after their historic ruling earlier this month in a similar case involving a, a Colorado bakery. Okay, that was the Masterpiece Cake Shop versus the Colorado Civil Rights Commission. And what did I tell you about that? That was also based on the first, the gun sales in Oregon case, and the sweet cakes case in Oregon, where the, those bakers got beat down. They got, ex, they got hit hard. They didn't get this chance. But I, what did I tell you then? Was the, what was the intent and purpose of that law? Of all these discrimination laws, or what, in these other cases was one, in, one intent and one purpose. What was it? Now we get to this case. Arlene Flowers in Washington. And I, so I said, well, this is going to be the same wrong answer by the Supreme Court and by the same reason. Well, I'm partially right in that Washington did an interesting and sneaky thing. They displayed this very similar and very same protection in a different way that obscures that it's doing the very same thing across this country. If all these discrimination cases are relevant to 
it's a merely, mainly one thing, but Washington extends it to other things, and you end up seeing it still interstate connections to commerce. So let's go and see what this case was about. They tell us it was right underneath RCW 49.60. And you go read 4960.03, and it says it's a declaration of civil rights underneath the state law. Not the federal one, but the state law. And they go, the right to be free from discrimination because of race, creed, color. The right to obtain and hold employment without discrimination. Emphasis there. For those of you who listened before, you know where I'm going with that. The right to, to enjoy full, uh, right of full enjoyment of, uh, of any accommodations, advantages, facilities, or privileges of any place of public resort accommodation or assemblage or amusement. The right to engage in real estate transactions. The right to engage in credit transactions. The right to engage in insurance transactions. Let me move it up quickly. We're talking about what? Employment, credit, real estate, and insurance. Everything in the state that they have to certify and license, correct? Did you hear anywhere about making, making flower arrangements or selling guns or making cakes? Did you see, hear any of that near Washington? So what we did hear before was that all the discrimination cases are specifically employment related. In Washington, they've extended this right to engaging in real estate transactions, credit transactions, and insurance transactions. Well, those are the, those are the big servitudes in all, in, 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 uh, big slaveries and impositions that states put on people. Notwithstanding, you're not supposed to be discriminated. Everyone's going to be underneath this, this servitude, right? Did you hear of talking about florists arranging flowers in those? Let me clarify this even further because I wasn't good enough with that. They tell you in one of the sections what chapter 4960 is and this discrimination comes strictly underneath just like the other statutes in other states are strictly tied to one statute where you found the purpose in other states is for employment discrimination solely this one now you exceed extends out to four places and then they hit it again they talked about breastfeeding in these places too so they kind of make it look like these these are extended beyond and on and on into other things but you have to read very carefully what what is the commission now that has been given the jurisdiction? You find that completely under 4960 is called the Human Rights Commission of Washington State. And included with all this is the list of their statutes that that gives you what the authority for them is. And so I was interested in what is their authority. And so I go to 40, 4960.120 uh, RCW and I read this what their powers and duties are. See, this is not invisible to anybody. It's all out in the open. And so I read. I go down. I can read it all to you. I'm not going to, well, let's see. To appoint, to obtain, to adopt, to receive, to issue, to make, to walk, cooperate, to foster good relations. All right. Well, let's go back up to one that may look like it's uh, relevant to what we want. To receive, impartially investigate, and pass upon Complaints alleging unfair practices as defined in this se in this chapter. Does it say right there to to, to uh, receive and, and to pass upon, which means to decide complaints alleging discrimination generally? No. So let's go to unfair practices. The only relevant thing there about their authority to hear complaints is relative to unfair practices. Well, let's go look and see. One of them is unfair age discrimination. No person shall uh, shall be considered to have committed an unfair practice on the basis of age discrimination discrimination unless the practice violates 49.44090. All right. So then we go into where what is considered an unfair practice, and the unfair practices are listed. But none of them have to do with arranging flowers. None of them have anything to do with making guns, selling guns, with baking cakes. None of them. Unfair practices is defined. The commission's dis dis jurisdiction and authority is over for complaints only over unfair practices as defined. None of the list will show you and describe anything to do with baking cakes, with making flowers, making and arranging. 
let's go and ask, go to their website, the human, Washington State Law Against Discrimination website, hum.wa.gov. 49.60 is a state law that protects all people in Washington from unfair and discriminatory practice in employment, real estate transactions, public accommodations, credit, insurance, as well as health care whistleblowers and state whistleblower complaints. Does that say anywhere in there about making uh, floral arrangements and selling them, baking cakes? No, you know, it doesn't. And when you, know, you go back, I found the early laws in 1949, the very first law made for this situation that has been amended till today was an employment discrimination law that was expanded, I think it was in 1957, and it got all convoluted in there, and then they cleaned it up, and now we have the statutes of today that will speak to us. It starts out as an employment and expands to other things of what you'll find is federal benefits. As I've been telling you, there's been a big co conversion about what these states are really doing. Let's go over to the Attorney General's website. What do they claim Washington laws and enforcement agencies do relative to discrimination? Washington Law Against Discrimination covers employment, housing, and other real estate transactions, credit transactions, insurance transactions, public accommodations like schools, government offices, and businesses that are open to the public. But what do they cover? What's the enforcement? Those unfair practices that are defined. It's not all Things, all things done by businesses open to the public. Workplace rights is what they look at. Workplace rights is what? Employment, insurance, like they said before. Public schools relative to what? It ends up being, they're talking about veterans and military statuses and things like that. That's employment. It's not going to be going to school. They're going to take a student. We're looking at employment there. We're looking at a job, a service animals. Well, they extended it to the disability. That's the Federal Disabilities Act. Service members, service members, relief, uh, civil relief act protects the National Guard and military reserve people uh, for rental agreements, loan interest rates, foreclosure evictions, insurance. Do you hear anything in this statute in this state that the Supreme Court sent back to this commission that is within the commission's authority relative to making a floral arrangement? I submit to you, if you didn't, if you don't want to hear that I'm being so arrogant to say so. I believe not. I would suggest and submit to you the Supreme Court had no right to send this case back like they had no right to send the Mountain case back. The commission in the state of Washington has no subject matter jurisdiction over this and has no uh, authority within that jurisdiction. And let me uh, go to another Human Rights Commission statement, which is a violation of people's rights. Protecting your rights, if it's not equal, it's not justice. Folks, if it's equal, it's exactions of every kind. If it's equal and you have a right different, then they're, they're, they've done injustice, haven't they? And so these generalities are looking at through a social, a socialism view, not your private property rights. Yeah, I hope you follow this, folks. This is how they get us to get on the wrong point. I, I don't know. I don't know how much easier it is to understand. This is not some exalted review of what what has to go on. This is written down. This is why you have a limited form government. Those of you that believe that, why don't you impose that? Why do you claim that's just not within the context of what you need to be looking at? I, I don't get some of this uh, aversion to doing what the most simplest things are written down. Be, oh, because it's a statute, I got to run from it. No, that's their limitation of the system that's oppressing you. Let me see the list here. I go back to their jurisdiction in this commission is only to deter, take complaints for unfair practices. Let me go through the list so that you can hear it. Unfair practices of financial institution. Unfair practices with respect to credit transactions. Unfair practices with respect to insurance transactions. Unfair practices of employers. Unfair practices of labor unions. We just heard about that labor union case getting flipped on its face, where they were forcing people who weren't in the union to pay monthly into that union. It's going to devastate those unions now. Extortion for, for getting so-called non-participatory negotiations. But here it is. Unions were involved for labor. That's employment. Unfair practices of employment agencies. Unfair practice discrimination against persons opposing unfair practice. 
<laughs> it's nonsense. Unfair practice of places of public resort accommodation, assemblage, amusement, train dog guides and service animals. Unfair practice to aid a violation. Unfair practice to respect the real estate transactions. Unfair practice to induce sales of rental property. Unfair pra you hear consistency in the AG site, folks. You hear, and the human rights, they told you that's only on these limited areas. I'll go on. It goes on. It goes into the uh, real estate on and on and on. There's, does any one of those that you hear me say floral arranging, selling floral arranging, the service of doing floral arranging, making uh, cookies, baking cakes, uh, selling guns, does anything have to do with that? No, it doesn't. But the Supreme Court of the United States just remanded a case back for this commission to look at uh, the the people that were sued here, Arlene's, uh, to review whether or not it, their decision of this commission was consistent with giving f balance to the people that were being sued and complained against. That's a violation of law, what you see right here. And I think, I think our missing the point here and getting all involved in the political division is, well, they do that for that reason, is our mistake for us. Uh, I write a Twitter just to remind me and to send it out for anybody that wants to uh, see. Uh, I think I, I write this stuff out, and now I'm using it as notes for me to hear here on the broadcast. The Supreme got it wrong again? Check. WSHRC has no jurisdiction to decide beyond, quote, unfair practices is defined in this chapter, close quote. That's right out of the code. RCW4, check, of RCW4960, quote, unfair practices don't extend to floral, selling floral arrangements, same for selling cakes or guns, and check, bar ass subversion, bar association subversion. Notwithstanding that you'll look and see closely that the Supreme Court justices don't have to claim that they were ever in the bar. So that's uh, pretty consistent with what I found in the way, but they, Washington's extended those protections into those other areas, but you'll notice they're all interstate federal rights that the state is now uh, um, helping to protect. And why is that? Because it's the 14th Amendment. Now, it was promoted uh, in, the, again, these memes. I got a little trouble with these memes going through uh, the Twitter sphere and whatever they show up. That someone uh, just leave it. Uh, he says, uh, "Am I?" It's a picture of somebody making a statement. Am I the only one around uh, that that thinks that the uh, what is that? I got to I guess make it a little bit bigger because I can't see it. It's so small the way they do that. But uh, he says, uh, uh, as a meme, "Am I the only one that b b believes that both the Christian bakers and restaurant operators should have the right to refuse service to anyone?" for any reason. Well, the point about that is if you read the law, you don't have to make that consideration. It's only because they violate the law that we have to look at whether or not a business has the right to refuse service. And we all know forever it's been the, a little sign that says we have the right to refuse service to anyone. Well, that right still exists. What we're not, not paying attention to is how the uh, Bar Association and now the Supreme Court is working to subvert that in small business, in business people. That the law is there, but it doesn't pertain, and the authority of the commission for taking complaints and passing or making decisions upon those only goes to a certain point and stops. There's your limited government for all you constitutional scholars out there. Why is this really so hard? So we have a notice that the Supreme Court really isn't doing anybody any favor. We'll say that out of uh, the side of our the tongue in cheek. Yeah, well, okay, it's it's a criminal thing anyway, and all law. Yeah, we got we live underneath this oppression. Is my problem with it, and for all of us, not just me. And as long as we live under the oppression, it will continue. We get that, folks. If we don't participate somewhere in this, it continues. Following with the Supreme Court showing you, you look at the, you just look at what's going on in the world. You can tell you're not in a place you should be, and we were supposed to act against that, act against the uh, the transgression. A Pennsylvania Supreme Court blocking of clergy sex abuse report devastates victims. So instead of focusing on the real important point here that the reason why it wasn't given, which was actually, uh, that's the oxymoron. They focus on the victims of not getting a report. 
instead of focusing on what the system didn't do that it's required to do if it actually operates under law. And the big deal statement in here, in this story, is that the Supreme Court of that state issued an order but didn't give the reason why. Didn't give give the reason why. We will know from our studies that not giving a reason why in a judicial judgment is not a lawful judgment. And when you have these answers coming out and they're telling you a, a truth and a proof, and you're missing that one, and you focus on the victims and the sex abuse and the predatory nature of the church and all that other stuff, you miss that the system who daily oppresses you is getting away with it again. And they're proving they don't have to give you a reason. We've heard this over and over for decades. And there's only a few of us arguing to try to stop this, but there's just not enough of us. They say, affirmed without opinion. They can't give no opinion. Not lawfully. They have to give the reason why that opinion is okay, but they don't. They haven't been doing this for a long time, and a lot of people, well, we're clueless as a, as a people anyway, so it's not a, I don't even have a doubt that we're going to miss it. But that's the problem. You, you get focused in on some of these things, and you're not finding out that the system itself is corrupted and allowed this question to persist that's not a question that they then exploit as a division. Oh, I got to have same sex people against the ones that are not same sex. Oh, does a businessman have a woman have a right or not? That's not even the point. The commission had no jurisdiction. Why is it even a question? Why did the Supreme Court do law and tell everybody that? Unless they're perpetuating the division, the destruction, pumping up the, the, the problem. And I say on this other story, you can go ahead and study this and find out yourself or take my word for it or not or argue with me or whatever. This is going to be what the fact is. The age of non-lawful order, the highest court order blocking the release of the secret proceedings, does not say why the court acted. That was in quotes from the story. Hashtag, no why, no law. They don't have a reason. It's not a lawful order. This is, again... These bar members that brought this case that way are cool with that. And who are they then protecting from what? And we can see that they're protecting the system, and then they're also protecting the one that they don't give the report to under the cloak of no reason at all. Are you okay with that? I don't care, I guess you could say. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. Yeah, okay, today. And maybe not you. Maybe you die first. They're going to protect your offspring. Another Supreme Court decision. Really, what can I say about this stuff? These are people think that this is all authority. This is all what's going on. Uh, we see certain things. Again, the Bar Association. Uh, again, I asked their Twitter. I said, "Is this a is this a mistake, an error, or a plan?" People look at this and say, "Oh, there's a an error that went on." I look at it and say, "No, that's a plan to destroy you. It's a plan to diminish you." A Supreme Court in California, bullet stamping law survives despite impossibility to or being impossible to comply. They claim in there that the, you, even though it's in, what the law says is impossible to comply with, that that doesn't invalidate the law. In fact, they say in the the court comes back and says, but the attorneys didn't do a, jur- a constitutional challenge. The, the attorney didn't argue in the proper way. The attorneys used this discussion in an improper application. And I look at that and said that means the representation, the Bar Association, is, is part and parcel to the destruction. The writer of this story says, well, this is a, a massive error. I mean, this is just can't be right. Remember, it's where it's appropriate. And I say... If you don't believe, if you want to say it's my opinion and not the, what you can go find in the law that was supposed to happen, the bar ass, bar ass, the bar association fails the Second Amendment again. The NSSF hasn't brought a constitutional challenge to the statute nor petitioned for a writ of mandate. The court comes out and suggests what the proper action should be. What is a writ of mandate, folks? It's that collateral attack I keep talking, one of them. The attorneys won't do those. Not when they're affecting, when they're going after property rights, and especially when they want to tie a knot in the barrel of your pistol. Remember the UN statute. Quote, 
Uh, some might code. I had to fabricate this. Uh, I had to cut out the thes and the the uh, and the things that uh, make it too long for Twitter. Instead, NSF. In, this is the court speaking. Instead, NSF invoked impossibility of compliance as a basis of voiding the statute. They explained that that's not the proper application. Instead of doing what they should have done, they did something else. At the end of the article, it says someone. Um, ed to asterisk 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 ed you make up the word uh, up big time I asked is that that messed up big time or a plan now I only got and Gary L responded said that's a plan and I have I had to laugh I didn't respond but yeah I've, it's got to be these uh, people this is the best we can do no it's not and and you're agreeable to it so they didn't place forward what they should have done. And they didn't do it on the proper interpretation so they could get the outcome they want. It can't be a, an unimportant coincidence. So we have this system coming at us, doing it all wrong, and we sit there thinking that they're the uh, authority to say so. And remember, an attorney only represents what you tell them. And then as they adjust it for what they can actually do, and they should be able to explain that. There's nothing you should be able to ask the attorney to do in asserting a right or defending a re uh, uh, asserting a remedy, defending yourself, that probably can't be done. But how many of you will know what that is? Is what I try to tell you weekly behind the woodshed. Why you're not going to listen for the 10 minutes that most of you all do that when you come into the file and go away. You'll never get what I'm saying. You'll never, and you'll go away and never come back. I don't, uh, you can't even understand what I'm talking about. And yet those of you, and I appreciate those of you that I can hear it, just, I can just listen to your words changing over the years. Uh, I've listened to how you analyze things much more clearly. Like At least I can understand that you're doing it in a more uh, uh, logical rationale that's based in a foundation of objective basis. I can't uh, applaud that, that more. I've seen more and more people do it, but there's so many people that won't. They don't even give it a shot. Uh, if we started looking at this better, maybe we would have a word in our mouth about not being so tolerant of it. Why didn't they do it correctly? Uh, in my mind, it's it's they've telling us why they won't do it correctly. They're changing your your society over time, and they're sitting in the seats of the seat. They rule you. You don't think there's rulers out there? Your utopia says there ought not be rulers. You're living in a fairy tale land. That isn't going to happen. It's never been reality. You better have your own rule, and uh, as I showed, you better develop you better develop your territory, which is this patent protection, and you better have your rule in there, and you better be able to understand how to keep everybody out of there. Is how this starts to work, and when someone tries to trespass in on that, you have a say better than anybody else that either has no say or doesn't or just fumbles around thinking that they know better. And if we're back in this uh, idea. Remember, we talked about the psychopathy of lawyers. This lack of moral capacity, the legalism of your life. And in fact, if they didn't have that, they would have no life. How many mining districts ran, well, this must be uh, maybe illegal too. They're going to make the lynching illegal. How many, how many mining districts uh, ran the attorneys out of their mining camps? Uh, as I understand it, every one did. Uh, you think there was a reason, folks? That now they're ruling, they're, they're ruling the entirety of this nation and they're ruling the majority of the world, these psychopaths. And they give advice to other sociopaths and potential psychopaths. And this came up here this, uh, this, um, week. I was trying to avoid it a little bit. It's just too much for me to keep up with. But a number of people sent me, did you see this? Did you see this? And then I got a couple of emails requesting some things. And so I want to touch this very lightly. It's not going to really be anything more than I've already said. I just wanted uh, want you all to be aware of this issue that came up. Uh, that I'm not sure what I feel about it. I, I, I don't. I addressed it before. It had to do with these the uh, First Amendment auditors. I said you really have to look at this a lot different. You have to approach it a lot different. I understand that there's people that are starting to look at what I said and start to apply it that way. Actually come at this with a plan that's not superficial in what it's be, is being done. And that set that up and, and give, make the record before you get in trouble. Well, I, you know, I can't tell you that they're listening behind the woodshed, but, uh, they sprung the trap before the guys that should have been setting it up to, to hold it, to have the trap there for someone else to, to step into. 
uh, the, the system knows what, what they're doing, folks. Uh, so what happened was that in Leon, Texas, a, sh- uh, a police chief uh, called a press conference. And when everybody showed up, and for the most part, the, uh, the press conference was attended with a lot of these First Amendment auditors, so-called. I, I mean, I don't quite get it all, but uh, you've, you've heard me talk a little bit about this before. I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying don't. I'm saying do it properly. If that's your, if that's your thing, learn, the, learn that battlefield and, and learn the tricks of what's going on. Well, they pulled one of the tricks, and they swept everybody up that showed up uh, to that uh, so-called uh, press conference. I haven't quite got out of it. They said there was some credential to press. I, they didn't. No one made any identification of regular press, you know, the uh, mainstream media press. I, that'd be an interesting, uh, I guess I could be told here now, but uh, if mainstream media was there, I'd be interested where they arrested. But if no mainstream media was actually there and the credentialed press was uh, the internet blogging and news organizations, which are likely not recognized, then if the regular MSM showed up and didn't get arrested or no MSM showed up, that tells you something. But I'm saying this was a setup and what they hit the people for was how they posted things. The, the main people right off the bat, they hit them for retaliation. And Texas is a new law. Uh, you can't out the cops of who they are, where they are, and all that other stuff. And so they got in for retaliation. Just exactly what I told the uh, suggested that any First Amendment auditor has to set the record that the First Amendment auditor can spring on the system is what the system sprung on all the, all the First Amendment auditors fat, quicker uh, to show you the game. Uh, it's not really in a game. This is serious stuff. Uh, but I wanted to touch this very kind of quickly. Uh, don't get too buried down because it, 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 the problem with all of this, everything is specific to the issue. Uh, I wanted uh, to no, uh, know people to note if you get the video on this, uh, it's quite a few video cameras. Uh, he, uh, this cop comes out, comes right out and says, I honor your First Amendment right. And then he says, you're all under arrest. In particular, this guy, this guy, this guy for these, this retaliation. But the problem I noticed was that he picked up everybody. He says even the witnesses would be held and they are, their recording devices would be confiscated. And so this sets up a different dynamic. And this is what I wanted to understand. Any one of those guys or, or girls, gals have to understand, were they arrested, were they a witness, or were they the press? And there may be some other statuses that you can claim. Each one of those has a different application and an approach and a strategy that can be exploited against the system, depending on their status and what they want to go with. And this is what is the problem for me when I have nothing to focus on, or like this case, I really don't have the time to take this. It's now a Gordian knot. They really kind of made a fiasco of this. But inside, any one of those parties in there, uh, the party to that fiasco, has the ability to start untying this thing. And uh, it will all depend on what they what they see their vic- the, the the victimization by the government would be based on their right to do what they should have been doing, and the pretense that was set up in order to set up a colorable imposition to steal their stuff. So if you understand how quickly now I just did that to get them into a place of color and then felony as a pretext and a pretense. Now, if you're a witness and they take your stuff as the one who alleges you being the witness and they don't know what you saw, that's a pretense and they're now tampering with the witness. Those, that's a whole different setup right there that I've told you about before. I've told you how to deal with a lot of this, but individ- each one of you have to anal- analyze it, analyze this in the moment. Uh, so I, another thing I noticed that there was a, supposedly a notice given, but I was, when I was told that what the statutes were that was quoted, I noticed one of them was 18 U.S.C. 35. But if you go look at that 18 U.S.C. 35, it has predicate acts. And if that notice didn't include those predicate acts, that really wasn't a notice of the violation. And that's not quite the notice I was saying you need to actually file. And so uh, be careful on what, again, it's really uh, specific, what I'm saying, and the subtlety could be so subtle that it might be missed. You really have to pay attention to some of these things. Uh, and what I'm saying there is if the notice was not actually adequate, it may not be something that they have to use, and you have to be- develop your case a little better. You now do have to bring the predicate acts, and then I would say bring them as a pretense, and then say he violated those once he was told after the fact. Now you got him under willing and knowing, right? Now you got him under the pretense and the, pre- the premeditated act to be Colorable, color of authority, which is that felony. You have to build those elements. It's not that hard. It's just settling down and getting those facts laid out. 
I understand that there was another video I was sent. Uh, there's a flash drive that has evidence of uh, threats by that chief and in a meeting that they uh, may, and this is all hearsay, way big hearsay, but that they may be premeditated to kill kill people. Uh, that may have to be treated on its own. However, that in that statement, if if the evidence trail proves to be evidentiary for a proof, that also gives you your your re- modus for why they did what they did too. So it's it can be separate, but one part of it can be used in in the process of the strategies and tactics to regain the condi- regain uh, the condition in a way that you need to. Uh, the Again, the, the the it depends on whether you were the witness or a press. You had press rights, or you were a charged party. The charged party is probably the worst one because those are the felonies that they impose. Uh, th- those are, and I don't like to talk about those because that means someone's life. Uh, of, you know, that we you really have to look a little different at those. Uh, there are ways to approach that. There may be things you can do, like a motion to quash, but that's really within the system, and you have to know the criminal procedures. And uh, and so, but the video. Also shows when you listen to that. I want for those of you that are, understand this and can watch. You watch how the it starts as a this this press conference, so called, starts as a pretense, and then he this off this chief, he's got it all seemingly backwards. He says, well, because you all have are been, he doesn't prove that all of the people there that are having YouTubes and pressing spreading this information around have done anything. He doesn't show that the law doesn't pertain to those that have a YouTube that is not liable to their comments. He doesn't say any of that. He just presumes upon everybody they'd be liable. And he says, I'm going to take all your information, all your cameras, so I can find out who you are in order to go look at your your YouTube account to go press this charge against you. That's a total inversion of what's supposed to happen. Again, no probable cause up front. They're fishing or worse. It's, I tell you, it's a pretext and pretense to violate rights. That's a felony. Now, I'm just talking here. So you got to really lay this out. And it doesn't come out. You don't just copy my words here on a piece of paper and say, okay, that makes enough. I'm telling you the nugget to, has to be expanded for the particulars. But this office, this chief of police, actually tells you stages of uh, throughout his... Uh, the, he left a camera running while he picked from uh, one of the guys uh, directly in front of him. He's explaining in different segments how he's doing it backwards. And you just parse that out, as I have suggested already. And I'm being cautious here. I don't want to give out too much. But I want to say to you all, it gives me a place to focus on for you all that might find yourself here. How to go about this stuff? Don't get you said this one was like I call it a fiasco. You walked into this one. The record should have been made much better before there was much of a of an of an issue. But now you see that the game's on. It literally is the war. But I don't want to even raise that level because people get all feverish about this. It's more methodical approach. So they got he did the retaliation against some of those guys when you guys were supposed to set up the record uh, in order to that he couldn't. And now you got to do an extra step to set that up to show that it was, it is, in fact, his retaliation. And it all can be done. You just don't allege it. You have to bring the elements together on how it all uh, formed up. My mind, when I watch these videos, it kind of goes through in a list of how I could do that. I just don't write any of this stuff. I don't write this stuff down. It's just too much for me to keep up with. But in the, I'm just doing this from a, uh, the, ana- the quick analysis on how this works out. I tend to work better that way than I do. It's like uh, from inspiration to to, from light to mass, uh, you slow down to, to when you get into into putting things in the into writing in mass in the mass side. The light speed goes really slow. I mean, it slows way down to do that. So, I'm thinking in light speed, but to get this stuff out takes a lot longer time. Uh, you got to get something paper to pencil, uh, pe- um, you know, ink to paper somehow. Uh, so, uh, I tried to prepare everybody before. I came a little bit maybe too late before people are familiar with what I'm saying. But now you're now seeing it. Now you're the ones on the front end of this thing. Each one of you has to assess this point. I understand there may be a class action suit. I'm not so sure about that. But if you've got attorneys that will help you and they're good attorneys, I told you, you have to be careful on the attorneys. Why not go with it? But I'm saying don't foreclose all your other independent. If you're a witness or if you're a press that got violated, a witness that got violated, a, a victim of this as a felony charge, you all can need to look at this and find out your path on how to do the jujitsu on them, flip the, flip this around on these guys. I'm not talking doing this as a tool of harassment. I'm saying set it up so that people can go through a town and not be harassed by these people. That this guy came out with this level of uh, attack, uh, they're not stupid. They did exactly what I would do if I was in that position. 
uh, if I was trying to take it, but I wouldn't have quite done it this way either, but because they did it backwards. I wouldn't have done it without the probable cause that he shows he doesn't have that you need to identify. So just as a just responding to a video, most of you may have maybe now you didn't see it, but those of you that have and those of you that are interested in all this know what I'm talking about. That's who I'm talking about at this point uh, about how that works. So again, uh, in the fel felony side, a motion to quash based on the fact if I got this understood, I uh, have this understood correctly, that a uh, the law does not pertain or there's a, a defense against the protection of an imposition or in the federal law protection against a publisher who has a comment that can't be held liable to the commenter. And if, if that's what's happened in these felony cases, you need uh, inside the system, and I would defer to someone who knows criminal procedure there in, te in the state of Texas, you would probably say that in a motion to quash. Why there? Because a quash is before you have to plea. And I suggest highly to find all your pre-plea remedies and avoidance and issue those first before you make the plea. If that's already been done as a plea, you then have to use them again inside the system of the uh, of the motions, which is a different status. Uh, so that's all I want. I guess I want to say right now. Most of it's uh, understood by the people that I responded to. Uh, in general, again, I wanted you all to hear it because it gives me a place of focus and uh, allows uh, me to get you maybe thinking about when you have these gov government officials on you. It is, it's not a game, but game is on, and you have to really ramp up your uh, your appreciation for the danger and for the tactics. And once I found, once you do, uh, you're ready uh, for what's going to happen. And it's not that you get all mouthy either. In fact, we did this at the mining district. Uh, you're not mouthy. You actually get really refined in all you have to say because you're focused only on identifying whether or not they have a pretext, pretense, or whatever, a false uh, imposition, and whether or not they're trying to violate you. That's all you're focusing on, and you and you have that dialogue in you more than, uh, am I detained? I mean, it's that's he said, you know, you're detained. And the problem is he made an arrest out of those he wasn't supposed to keep. He was you know, looking for fishing for uh, for information. He was stealing uh, evidence and, and tampering. He was the alleger. He was the he was the complainer, and he was uh, then messing with the evidence. He's not supposed to do any of that stuff. But this is what the sociopaths do, and on the edge of going to psychopathy, if they're guided by a psychopath called a lawyer, then uh, you got to be careful of who you're dealing with. So keep them moving on. i got a lot to do here. The police ta state takes a giant leap towards pre-crime. And so what, that's kind of what this guy did, in a way. I don't know if I put it all in that. Uh, he, he just decided he's going to say, you're doing this, you're doing this, and you're doing this, and so therefore you're a criminal. And well, now you have the work. Now you have the work that's even more than you could have got away with before by making the record better uh, would be to not have to have to do that. But now you have the extra step. But this is where we're going. Uh, the, uh, they talk about in this article about the Fourth Amendment being destroyed. We, we know all of this. We talk about the technological, prof technological profiling. We've talked about all this stuff. It's not unknown to us. What I'm saying is that this is the method. You have to take cognizance of the techniques and how they play out is one way was they just did it in... Uh, in Leon, they just they just did it. it. One aspect of it, and they presume you guilt. You can't again. Here's the point about this: you can't be innocent, folks. So they'll make you guilty. Here's a proof: you immigrant, all you immigrants. It's not just people in the United States illegally. ICE is nabbing lawfully permanent residents too. To me, this this is no discussion different than the uh, chief of police coming out and saying you're all under arrest or you're not. You're you're all detained. I'm going to take your stuff. I deem that you've done this, and this is who you is, and that's all I need. And in large part, the Supreme Court's giving them that power, but I've explained how you start to erode that as well ahead of the time, and that's the problem that you have now. You have to start eroding it after the fact. I, I think you can do it, but it's going to take a very specific thing. Well, immigration people are collecting up people that are in the United States legally and destroying their lives. See, you're all guilty. If I, another thing here. You're deemed to have done wrong, and that's good enough. So all of y'all that think you can get away with, oh, I don't do anything wrong, I'm telling you, this is the different world now. Those of us that thought that, it's it's over. you got to stop that. It's certainly not for the for the little ones in the future moving forward. The, 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 again, we're dealing with psychopaths, is all I can tell you. They're criminals in the office. Uh, exclusive. Man catches cops on video framing him to justify blowing up his door and raiding his home. W where did America go, folks? It's gotten here because we didn't stop them, and I've explained how to start to push back on there. And we'll hear, I'll get to the story here really quickly about that. 
But anyway, so I guess the point here, I don't want to get to the story too much. You had to have a video. I told you, you better start having your video cameras running. You better have ways to store this stuff up out, outside of your... See, if they, they stole all the cameras and phones uh, from the people on the street, uh, the, the sheriff, uh, the, the chief of police did, if they, were video, if they were uploading to the cloud, which is also a trap, but at least this is a tool we can use, then it wouldn't matter that he took that took that stuff from you. You still have the evidence of his wrongdoing. You don't have to worry about whether or not... Uh, well, he's still tampering, but you, you at least have your copy uh, separate and, and uploaded where that's possible for, so that you can show either tampering by his deletion or by his changing of video. I, I don't know the capabilities and I don't know the extent of the plan against everybody there uh, when they did that, but uh, we don't know and you won't know until you catch this evidence that this man had to have video running to catch. And this was over some time because there was an informant involved and all this other stuff. But he, this is how he, he had to have a video running and recording to catch the cops uh, being criminals. No, I mean, where did we go, folks? Virginia woman spent three months in jail despite a police video proving her innocence. So even on their own evidence, it's going to be take you a while to get out of jail. Now, she's going to have a lawsuit, but this is the problem. Well, it's the best we can do for ourselves, I suppose, they tell us, is that we get to have remedy after the harm. If you're alive now, folks. So another evidence, you got to have video. You're going to have to have your own, preferably, but even on the police video, it shows them that they did wrong. They don't care. There's no accountability at this point. And I'm uh, con concerned that we're not setting up the records in a way that we can bring it in pretty quickly. Again, this mandate is an equity of action. It would happen very quickly. It wouldn't be a lawsuit like everyone thinks it is a drug out over, over times and years. The intense video shows cops shot fleeing man in the back. Uh, the, then gets swarmed by angry citizens. So here we come. I told you this was coming too. Citizen has to stand up and in mass now against these armed military personnel that will shoot you in the back. Where do we go as a nation that we shoot people in the back? And yet that's our so-called protect and serve, which we, we already know it's protecting and serving the system. It's protecting the system. It's a military operation. And they serve you with process in order to keep you all controlled. But in this case, the shot in the back, the people come out and and confront that. This is now you getting involved locally, but look at the look at the tension that's developed. And and this is another conversation I I, I got up here. The question was, where do you draw the line in today's crazed political environment? I'll answer that a bit. Get out of the politics, the politics of it. Go back into what the principles are supposed to be. Start reasserting those. I, I brought this uh, this article forward just to let you know if it's not just me now coming around to it. People are finally realizing it's not that the problem in what you're dealing with isn't political. It's not wasn't Obama. Obama wasn't the unqualified one. It's not Trump. It's not the a bunch of vote, bits of voters here and there. It's not demonizing our neighbor, or what he calls dehumanizing them. It's not any of that. He actually talks in the mirror function here. He says that this is just a mirror of us, everybody. And what he says you have to do, we have to look at that in us, and we have we have the obligation to go back out and stop them from harming us. And so he hits on the point of politics. I say remove yourself from the politics and go to the principle. So what I've been asking you, that's what you find behind the woodshed, folks, is the principle. Uh, principles you may not have known or you ought to have known or now that you do know it, that you bring on the next guy who doesn't, who's supposed to know better. They usually come in a costume. Now that costume is even a costume over a costume. It's because they look like a cop, but they're actually a military condition uh, that you don't really quite understand either. Uh, what else? So the people are now standing up. They're not liking what they're doing here. That's another confrontational problem. So what can you do before that? What have I suggested that you do? Well, Boston residents demand community control over police surveillance at packed city council meeting. you got to, for as much as I, I, well, I've done it before, but it's just not what I work best at. You have to go down to these hearings, and I say you can do it otherwise as well. Combined effort, go down to your council meetings, and you rest control of oversight from the government to the people. The problem with this problem, this issue is they usually pack those councils, those commissions and bureaus, or those oversight committees with their own. And so you have to have a real integrated, educated mass of people 
in order to regain the control. They really have us on over a barrel here. They really are having their way with us. Uh, so having excuses or arguments with me isn't going to fix this problem. But there are people out where the worst of the worst is coming out. People are starting to respond. These are examples to us that I'm asking you to be for others. Uh, in Boston, I don't know where that's going to go. I'm not going to even get wor worrying about the Boston resident thing here. We're just going to say people are standing up to say enough is enough. And I've told you you have to do it in their policies and oversights. And that's what's happening in Boston. Okay? It's not, we're not helpless against uh, the threat of being, of being shot, which apparently is a pretty prevalent right now. In fact, we don't have a protection against it in the first instance. Uh, given that they can just fear for their life, they see a shiny thing and you're no longer existent. And as the academic says, well, then you get to protect your, you get to sue for your constitutional rights. And then he's so blind and absent, he doesn't know you're not there no more. You don't even know you're not there no more. Because you're dead. And we kind of allowed this on ourselves. We walked into the traps. And then we get hit with the retaliation. It's an interesting dynamic. I was asking you not to walk into that. You did. Now you know what that is. And now we get to fix it over there in Texas. But you have to do it methodically. You can't do it on your ideas. Let's say on that notice on just giving them a list of, of, of violations of the law. That's not what I'm talking about. There is a, a factual elementary of elements, a fact of, and statement of elements that build those to validate them. And this is on acts that they've been doing or things that they've been doing, not in anticipation. And so uh, cost of government rises when local newspaper closes. So we're finding here when a local media that checks the controls of, a co of governments that don't listen to their people or like in Boston require the people to go into the council hearings and, and demand control, demand better policies that control the military, the cops. When you lose the media that can investigate and report on that to the wider community, if I can use the wider town, the wider jurisdiction, the costs of that government go up. There's a study. You can use that. I, all this, to me, is just evidence that empowers people. They just start pulling this together in a certain way to show there are certain things in this country that are checks, balances, accountabilities that we really need to not let be gone, uh, be lost. Uh, when a local newspaper closes, the cost of government increases. They found without the uh, uh, oversight of a local paper was enough to allow government officials just to do what they do. The, the psychopathy, not a psychopath. This is a psychopathy. They, there's nothing to constrain them. This is what this, this nation, the United States of America, was built on constraint. But it was, again, we were told that it was the mass of educated people that had to do it. A newspaper, not the mainstream media, but a local newspaper that's telling the truth, is instrumental on in keeping the cost down for those of you that look at your property taxes. It helps. Well, you know, we have to have that oversight. So we're having some examples here on how that works. Now I'm starting to get into what I want to talk about, uh, more into what the government's doing, uh, how they're getting advantage on us, uh, what the notice to this is, it's what's coming and how it's coming. And I want to you know, move from uh, what we see coming and what they're doing and the plan rolling out uh, to maybe, maybe, because I don't know that this is not going to happen, maybe how the future rolls out in a bunch of things that I've been watching for actually quite a long time, but they started to roll together in the last few weeks. Uh, and uh, this little report here regarding you don't control what your police do and the surveillance and, it, and, and the policies of how they address people. Uh, they will go to the extreme, and it's now hitting the hitting the the uh, the, the the news, the notice to us. How long is a question? Uh, how long before Chinese-made Axon police drones begin killing Americans for profit? So those last prior examples of what you have to do, you have to go do because it's going to this. Uh, Chinese made acts on police drones. We already have the problem with the Chinese infiltrating our government. They're uh, surveillance devices for a foreign government. Wow, that on its, on its face is pretty phenomenal. But then you have the police using it for profit to take you out. What better? You think that's a fantasy? This is that. This is already happening. Not that they may go to drones. They already have what North Dakota made it lawful for them to use drones and use guns on drones. So this is not out of the ordinary. It's now coming filtering out that they're actually probably well, they're in partner on these new partnerships. This is the global governance in your face. And China, with its production capacity now, is is uh, on the forefront of this. And uh, that led me to start believe. Uh, live, I started to th look at this and 
saying, okay, what's what's happening now as we move into the future? These little articles and snippets of articles are popping up. And I looked at that uh, article of the drones being used by the police. And we looked at uh, digital and AI starts to come to my mind and the government's reliance upon uh, every all things, uh, the Internet of Things uh, and the surveillance situation. And uh, so I see this drone being used by the cops and then i saw this story many neanderthal brains will be connected to robots now this isn't a brand new story it's actually been popped up they had found the neanderthal dna and, and some some genes and they now made some dna well, we were i think i actually reported on this now they have what remember we've, i talked about the neanderthal organoids there's these massive cells that are like small brains now they're reporting that the Neander, many Neanderthal brains will be connected to robots. And they talk about this thing. It's a pea-sized version. Or they call it a caveman's brains. Uh, I'm not so sure about that in the characterization. It doesn't matter. They've got a set of cells here that operates like a brain. It's a pea, the size of a pea. Now, I don't know if you look around the world, but there's some pretty small things that do some pretty extraordinary things. That a pea-sized brain is quite the size for function. Now here's the story right here. Will a, will a Neanderthal brain, a mini one, will be connected to a robot? What's a drone? But a robot. It's just a machine. And this story sets out, Neanderthals went extinct about 40,000 years ago, but thanks to cutting-edge science, there is now a lab in California that has petri dishes filled with pea-sized versions of a caveman's brain. So I respond to that, but, quote, but thanks to cutting-edge science, yeah, thanks. Sounds like all they need to do now is uh, is throw the neo organ neon neans organoid onto a 2004 prepared glass petri dish and it'll grow microscopic interconnections turning them into live computational devices hashtag neuralink neuralink is the company that elon musk just made to be the synthetic connection to our brains to digital and in the story that cryptagon provides about the neanderthal brains of pea size he produces the link to the brain cells that were in a petri dish that did fly, at least a model, did fly a virtual fighter, an F-22. If you think that putting a Neanderthal brains in a, in a, in a drone is not all, probably already being done. 2004, the Neanderthal brain, already they know that this petri dish of cells interconnected on its own, that you stick a pea-sized Neand brain an organoid on the top of that, you don't think that's going to connect up? And the Petri dish of interconnected cells is the thing that ran the F-22. You don't think a Neon organoid is going to do a whole lot better? Do I get to remind you here about something way back when? I never really watched it too much. I certainly saw pictures here and there of a program called Battlestar Galactica. And they had something called a Cylon fighter, a raider. The second version, and the second version were new raiders that were cybernetic in nature. The ship was actually a living creature with a complex system of organs, veins, and biological fluids inside the main body. They were really similar to the humanoid Cylons, but the Cylons were actually a reptilian race that invented the, the, the automaton, automatons to work, benefit them. Is this too far from the future, what we've already been told, that they're going to take a Neon organoid and put it in a Petri dish that runs an F-22 to fly a drone? You think it might, they'll be able to do more? You think they'll take that and put that right in this a new style? Cylon Raider. You think? I mean, is this, am I getting too wild for it? Is it too sci-fi here, folks? I don't really think so. I really don't think so. Where I might have, a, you know, a decade ago, uh, we go back to this program called the Cylon Battlestar Galactica, and they talk to us about what the Cylons were, even in a story form. The Cylon race was a reptilian race, and the created robots called Cylons. 
the original Cylons were like uh, were this organoid creation that they used to help protect the Cylons from extinction, which is the other interesting point. Where are we going w- with this point about why we need or- uh, neon organoids that run robots to protect us from ourselves, I suppose? So we can read more. I can do a lot of this. I don't have the time today. I just wanted to point out we have the technology now to bring on what they told us was a raider fighter uh, from a story in a TV. A Petri dish that can fly the model of an F-22 fighter is probably... This is the Petri dish. I'm not talking about the Neon organoid now. Just the Petri dish with the interconnected cells was able to ri- fly the model of an F-22 Raptor. What do you think a little brain on top of that is going to be able to do? I don't think it's too far the the thought of that they're building here and already have possibly a Cylon drone, Cylon Raider. And I went and looked around and I found the picture. Pretty cool. It was made out of you know from light wave, three D, but it's pretty neat. And the reason why I looked at that is because there was a Gary L and Suspect Sky and they did a, a broadcast where they have a UFO. At the end of 12, you'll get the link to this at the 12 minute mark of one of the, one of the, uh, web, the uh, videos of the compilation of all these unidentified things. You'll see the C shape, which I didn't know at the time was one of these raiders. It looks characteristically the similar. Don't know that it is, but there appears to be an authentic flying object that has the Cylon Raider shape. But if I had any doubts about whether or not these things might happen and see that the police are going to go be using drones and they are also now moving to AI, this is maybe exactly what's already been happening. And so we're moving into places that are, again, you know, some of this we don't know where the government goes. We don't know how far advanced. Our theories are that they're 30 years ahead of us. We're just coming on to putting the pieces together. This is, there's no proof of any of this is what I'm telling you. I'm saying all these things put together, as I've done before many, many, many times. Many, many times. Doing it again right here. It's all started to come together. Consistent with, uh, in fact, Suspect Sky and uh, Gary L and his crew looking at the same kinds of news that's coming on and, and having their own conjectural consistencies with what I'm going to be saying to you here. Let me do a little bit of a diversion, though. Because I want to bring it back to the psychopathy, the making of war, the impetus of war, what people do in response, and what that might start to cause giving excuse for uh, these psychopaths to do. So let's go on. We have a, a we have a in the, in in our knowledge of a crea- uh, fa- fiction, an organoid ra- driven race of of machines that protects a society. That isn't much different than cops using these drones. Let's build them up. It's a flying device. It looked like it was fairly large. The video of this C-shaped craft that looks like a raider actually appears to me to move cloud. It actually goes through the top of a cloud and stretches it out. So it looks real. Again, what do I know? I'm just going off tidbits of information here. I don't even know how something that shape could fly in the atmosphere and not maybe in normal aerodynamics. What does? What is out there? I don't know, but I'm seeing the parts and pieces. What are we doing now within ourselves in the dynamics of people and warring, warring people across the world? Now you look as, as we see the world, the war in the world, the war in the world. U.S. proxy Israel is declaring unlimited war on Iran and maybe Russia. What did I tell you that Israel was but a proxy of the United States to do it's a tool like is is? Here's someone else that sees it. But the point is we're talking now what the United States does. Declaring unlimited war on Iran and maybe Russia is observed by somebody in the in the notice around available to us that this proxy named Israel uh, is used by a, 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 the empire in order to attack other peoples is where I want to start to move with this because I we need to go to something of bigger imperative. U.S. study on decapitating Russia chi- and China may raise fear of surprise nuke attack, was another thing. The United States is studying on decapitating the structures of government, uh, as we have uh, in the United States a de- an, uh, an in-depth structuring of the government, so in case one gets hit, taken out, you don't, deca- you don't take its head off, it still can function. Uh, the, they are looking how to do that in Russia. 
But these little leaked stories are coming out. They're showing that these studies exist, that there's thoughts. And yes, your intelligence and your and your and your military, uh, well, the oxymoron, military intelligence, has to work in the future of the potentials. I, I get all that. But I'm the the potential, nonetheless, is pointing out to another thing that starts to happen. It's not just studies, but it actually becomes what appears to be capacity, and it becomes what you start seeing in the news. A U.S. study to decapitating Russia would be a notice to Russia and China, wouldn't it? And then we heard Putin, Russia creates advanced weapons responding to U.S. scrapping missile treaty. We find that they'll, the, the Russia, at least, is protect, starting to tur turtle up. It's going to protect itself. Not attacking anybody, not claiming to attack anybody. But because of actions of the United States, and certainly probably this study they already knew about, uh, they are going to start making advanced weapons that I understand, we're told, completely surprise the capacity of Russia to have these, completely surprise the United States military. But when we're playing this game, this hop-skip game, multi-level Chinese checkers and chess and whatever it is that this, this ends up being, uh, we start to see that this starts to be the uh, the reason why we move forward and the, the justification for having other things as they start to drop seeds on you to accept other things that are coming along, probably already been in, in existence. China, Russia planning space attacks on U.S. satellites. Now we transition from the ground to space. As they keep feeding us information about the threat that Russia and China are to the United States. Those together may not be able to stop the might of the United States. We, not, we certainly don't want to get into a battle because it would be, uh, well, no holds barred, no guarantees, but uh, apparently the might of the United States is very capable. I don't understand it, but there it is. Uh, they don't need an excuse, but they use them, and that's why I told you last week. Very interesting uh, limitation. Uh, Russia, as they tell us, uh, China and Russia planning space attacks on U.S. satellites. Well, that would be a natural thing to think about. Uh, why, you know, if they're gonna, if we're gonna use our satellites to attack them, they would be looking to attack, attack our satellites, wouldn't they? I mean, that that just makes sense. It's not, it's not uh, un, unknown that we would be, they would be looking to take out our our, our communications, like that we would be taking theirs out. In fact, we have a not a, a lot of uh, space planes that go up. We don't know what they're doing. I'm certain that that's what they're checking out and other things. Uh, but this is the I'm just going on a story thread. China Russia outpace terrorism as greatest threat to the United States, says Pentagon. So this is building the beating the drum uh, for a, a global and then and into space threat that the people of America are going to have to be agreeing to in order to allow the government to do another step, a next step. Let me get back to those the weapons that the Russia came up with. One of them is a hypersonic weapon that goes into space and it's able to do it's able to go any just about anywhere for as long as it needs to special nuclear drives all this interesting cool stuff very big capacity uh, nothing that we've ever been told is in the capacity of the United States yet uh, they tell us and they show us that they're not quite yet, there yet in fact at the time they're showing us that we're gaining ground on these technologies then Russia came out with the technology so as a material as a military power now, I'm starting to think, uh, just sitting back a bit, looking at this, what does the United States do? It's now actually, it could be threatened by all this. And, and I don't think that it's going to be uh, may allowed to be susceptible. But there's also gameplay going on. And so how do we hop, skip, and justify maybe things we've been doing already? We have to throw a bigger, bigger threat and a bigger and unfolding danger that I thought, uh, came, occurred to me, must also be couched in what? Protect and serve, right, folks? This is a great model. Protect and serve. Women, children, and the indigenous. We warm and fuzzy everything here. Well, let's go on and start looking at what has been been brought to our consciousness more and more over the last few years uh, is these uh, now more, if I could say, extraterrestrial threats. Been slowly bringing in, uh, bringing in the uh, the the probability that they're going to happen. Ex NASA just hit hitting the red. This one just hits the news here. I think yesterday. Ex NASA astronaut World Asteroid Day. Remember, uh, we were rooting for the asteroid to win 28, uh, 20, what 2016 election or something. We're hoping for the 2020. Well, that government's going to 
that government's looking at these, uh, looking at the asteroid coming in to take take the day, and it's going to make a defense against that asteroid to come and win the election. You don't think they listen to the um, so-called alternative media? United States astronaut, World Asteroid Day. We will defend our planet together or perish like dinosaurs. The imperative. We will perish like the dinosaurs if we don't do this. Well, ex-NASA, NSA, NASA, that is civilian military, folks. So who's speaking? And they're putting the threat of some inanimate object coming that we don't understand. And then we hear these stories. Unconfirmed near-Earth objects. Found this on astrophysics on Cornell University Library. A study that was done. It says, we studied the near-Earth objects. Candidates posted a, in, on the Minor Planet Center's near-Earth object confirmation page between 2013 and 2016. Out of more than 17,000 NEA candidates, it's near-Earth asteroid. NEA candidates, while the majority became either new discoveries or were associated with previously known objects, about 11% were unable to be followed up or confirmed. So here comes the bogeyman. I won't get into more. You can read, get all these links. You can start putting these pieces together for yourself. I found another astronomical journey, uh, uh, journal, excuse me, uh, a discussion of the, of the Ver, uh, Peter Verry's uh, group uh, doing another, again, a, a set follow up of the very same study being proving that we don't track everything and we don't see everything. The bogeyman is being set up in space. And as I'm thinking about, well, what is the United States going to do now against this threat that now Russia can be out there and can actually fulfill its objectives to take out its satellites and everything? What else has been going on? What is the big jump that the United States can do and has the capacity to do? But uh, this this unconfirmed near-Earth objects becomes a ongoing problem and discussion they keep telling us is a need that needs to be fixed or at least gain a handle on, that we need in order necessarily to put money to and to have the capacity to stop an, Earth, an asteroid the size uh, enough that, would de- that was big enough to destroy the dinosaurs and it will destroy you. I guess now climate man, Michael Mann made climate change has to take a back seat. That's an interesting diver- uh, de- segue being that we found out that all that was a fraud too. But let's look inside what may not be the fraud. When we got all these connections, they're sitting there. Again, total conjecture on my part, but I don't think it's, at least with my experience in technology and material science or the limitations of it, that we were, that's been my limit. Some of our limits of our technology was based, we didn't have the stuff to do what we thought we could, that we wanted to do. We just didn't have the tech, mineral materials technology. And so this is where they start talk, taking to us. Not only the materials technology, but the materials access at all. And so we've been hearing it. I'm just bringing these points together now, together for you. And I have to say, uh, Seth's best guy and J- Gary L and uh, Xavier and whoever else he had with him, they beat me to this one. I didn't have it in time to come, and they just made a video. You can look on the Internet. He's, they're doing this conjecture very similar to what I'm doing. I'm going to add a few more things, but they beat me to this point. There, there's other minds that looking at these details, these disparate points, all coming back together, uh, that could be come back to the dots that could be connected. And then we hear that the NASA, NASA, uh, and the scientists are now talking about asteroid mining, right? We're talking about getting the materials in space. Why do we do it there? Because they're there. They're available. We're supposedly losing the minerals in the Earth. We're not going to be able to get them anywhere. But what? What is that doing? It's saying we have another purpose in space. Not only do these threat, these asteroids threaten us, we can go get them. We, if we can get uh, identify them uh, and see that they're coming, we can go collect them and can we mine them? Asteroid mining may be a reality by 2025, as I'm told by Space.com. They talk about the possibility in a very short time here. They talk about how they're going to do it. They talk about the all the metals that are available. They talk about it's possible. They talk about a small project that's going to go doing exploiting the resources of space. They're telling us that it's all there. I'm not denying any of that. That's absolute. They're absolutely there. And they come by the planet all the time, we're told, or close enough. Some closer than others. But when you have a a station out there, let me just uh, conjecture. 
What if we made a mini planet eater, a doomsday machine like we saw in Star Trek? You notice that thing was tapered off to a point. It was like his long ear horn, but it tapered off to a point. It really didn't have an exit. But it was a doomsday machine that you saw in Star Trek that would go and destroy you. It would eat planets. It was a big, long tube. And it had the capacity to pulverize planets. What if we made a miniature one like that? And we send it out looking for asteroids that threatened us. And what if we throw out the idea that we're doing all this because we need to save ourselves for, get, well, we get the materials and we can save ourselves. But what if the other angle is we can't do them all? And we also don't know how many are coming in. And now because we have the technology that we're out there, we can secretly divert them to places on the Earth. Do you think a hypersonic missile from Russia can be used as an excuse to be used when a natural asteroid's coming in to hit some place on the Earth that could destroy your whole town, uh, maybe a whole region? And you're not told that that's actually a directed missile from space? Do you think a hypersonic missile has anything to do with the defense against that thing? Seemed to me a logical jump for the United States to get to go to space. We come and protect ourselves, but we can actually control the direction of those things and put them on somebody's head at some point. You think that might be an effective technique, a tactic? We have some come in. We can defend few. We can't defend them all. Oh, sorry, Russia, you lost Moscow. Sorry, Beijing. Oh, Beijing. Beijing. Hello, Beijing. Oh, I guess we lost Beijing. And who's the only one out there but the United States to act as some kind of a protect and serve shield? I thought that was a pretty interesting tactic they could take. Is it possible, though? Well, I think just that idea alone it is. But we have asteroids coming in. We'd have to be able to field them. We're talking about mining them. I just kind of had the idea. What if it was a miniature planet eater? And that planet eater was actually a mining processing center like we would have on Earth, but for space. And guess what? Now, an ASA has how you can learn how to mine asteroids. So it's not just that it's all of a sudden in our face a threat. No, they're looking at, we're told and we're given all the information that all this is possible and they're working on it. And it is. I don't see how it's not possible. They tell you how to go about mining asteroids. Now, as a miner, it's just a mineral to me. You, uh, It's a mineral that has a certain certain thing it is, and you have to figure out how to crack that nut and process it so it's, it's, it's a uh, viable and a profit. Well, in space, if you're looking for materials, the whole thing is viable and a profit because you're using it for the materials to do what? To build stuff up there, not have to ship it up from the ground. And remember, I've got a Neon organoid on the next drone ship that doesn't need a man or a woman to do anything. Let's throw that in right now. Except that we have another threat to throw out in the world. And they did. It comes from the mainstream media's fact. Bizarre research paper explores threat of alien galactic cyber attack. Well, they're out there then, folks. And we don't know now what we're going to be facing with. And I could just see the military side of this coming up, but we need to protect against it. We need a force. We need a fleet that the force can use. We need a space force. We have a galactic, alien galactic cyber threat. Oh, what a Cylon? A Neon organoid that no one knows we have that we then throw out there to be the threat against us? I hope you see the game that's being played. We talk about you, Israel being a proxy. I, I think I saw Grimmer saying it's the other way around. I'm not so sure. It doesn't really matter, folks. I mean, we're they're moving us beyond, okay? We already know the United States uses proxies. We know Israel uses You know the government uses proxies. They can just build up this alien attack, galactic cyber attack. It's the cybernoids. It's these little neon organoid controlled contraptions like the cops want to use on you. They actually put them up in space. Trump's Space Force pushes reopens argument about military in space. I look at the picture. It shows NASA with 
four Air Force jets flying very coolly in nice formation in front of one of the launch sites. I, I, I love all this stuff, folks. This is a, just neat stuff. But the, here's the reality: the future, or the is it the fantasy or the future? They're telling us the military is involved with NASA. President Trump wants to do the Space Force. I called them, they now will now have legitimate space cadets. The problem is they're being driven and dr uh, they're being created by what? A high probability of psychopathy that has this sense of probably a paranoia that has to dominate the world. In fact, be when they brought this Space Force out, I, re I understand they said that they want to dominate space. And they didn't limit the galaxy or the universe. So we have a Space Force branch being developed. I don't even understand the law, the constitutionality of this. But notwithstanding, I'm not on that point. Space Force is going to be real. They've now created enough threats out in, out in space that can come in. And from the ground of a different countries that it really lays the foundation of, of need and legitimacy. But if they're going to dominate space, they have to do it with a contraption, a missile system, a, 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 a ship, a set of ships, a space force of, of vehicles to do this, don't you? Aren't you watching Battlestar Galactica come up here? I mean, or Star Wars, all this stuff. And is it within the realm of our, of our technology as we start coming on? Well, it appears to be. And when you start putting together this idea that you can have a robot drone with a Neanderthal brain cybernetically connected that isn't people, and we no longer have to need people, we expand what the possibility is that this can actually be brought into being, and we start to remove all limitations of our mind that were imposed upon us by these same people uh, that says we can only do certain, certain things in a certain way. Uh, I advance now the idea that the moon itself is a death star. I found an interesting little story about this, that the moon is a Death Star. And there's a lots of facts about the moon that make it very anomalous in our, in our sky, uh, in our view of our sky. Am I saying that it is a Death Star? No, you go read the anomalies, you'd tell me whether or not what that thing is out there. But that did broach the idea of the Death Star. If I was going to dominate the universe, I want a Death Star. In the minimum, right, folks? And we all laugh. Is it? How could we even build one? And so you look around, folks. Could we build a real life Death Star? Is actually an article you can find, and it comes out of space.com, the same place that's given us all this other information of threat and capacities. And they actually talk about can you build one? And I found this just this, this fascinating. They're actually discussing it. They talk about how much it would cost, how they could, how it would be done, the limitations on it. They've already got it worked out, folks. And I think it's cool. I'm not having a problem with all it. It's just that when you start attaching it to a psychopath that wants to dominate the universe, and they get what they want usually, because no one stands up to stop them. I, I can't see how this is not a potential possibility. Uh, the stories that come out talk about the cost being so great, it's 850 quadrillion. Another story will show that if you tried to send all the materials from from Earth, it would outdo the production of the Earth anyway, but it would have a cost in the quintillions. It's like a billion, billion, trillion or, or something like that. But they talk about it here, it would be 850 quadrillion, not quite a quintillion. And they'd offset it against the national debt of 20 trillion. On the question of whether or not we could build one. Well, uh, folks, uh, maybe they already built one because Haynes.com has the Imperial Death Star Manual. Got a link for it. Fascinating. Okay, maybe tongue-in-cheek. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, is it viable? Is it viable without people as well? Do we need people to create this thing? Underneath the imperative of an, an uh, alien galactic invasion, an asteroid dis destruction of all life on Earth, uh, Russia or China's imposition on the United States, a threat, or any other number of things that we can do. Well, we have asteroids that we now are told we can mine and have the capacity to do so. We just have to go do it. 
We just have to have the political will. We already have the Death, Imperial Death Star Manual. Haynes will sell you the book. And then we get this other report we heard about, flying by the Death Star moon. It's the moon that sits out called Mima at Saturn. It actually looks like the Death Star. It even has that octagonal-shaped hole on the right-hand side. Is that a Death Star? Could it be made to be one? I don't know. They want to mine rock. They could mine that one. They could mine all the material they need to make the rock, uh, make the Death Star from the inside. What is a, a mining processing plant but nothing but a, 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 a rock sep, min, elemental mineral separator? All right? We can do that in all of this, apparently. And so you get the, they already have the manual, but they'll tell you also, I found another link. Here's how you could build a Death Star. And what got my mind on this part was that I always seem to put men and women in the function of this. So you need men and women to do things. But seeing the drones and the neon, the neon Neanderthal organoid, the neon organoid, as I t hashtagged it, removes that limitation and puts us into the robotic stage of the robots doing everything intelligently, enough to fly an F-22 on a petri dish, single plane layer of neurons, not attached to a neon, neon organo, uh, organoid. When you add the brain of the organoid and then attach it to our concept of mining and construction, what might we get? Well, they tell us how to build this Death Star. The other problem is, again, be careful. They get our mind in the fact of how they would do it from Earth, how you do it under current technology that's not adequate. And they t it's fascinating to read about this. What the thing would take is really outside of the ability to do it based on trying to get all the materials up to space. But they've already said they're going to mine the materials in space. They don't have those costs. They also talk about a pro uh, the asteroid redirect mission, which is going to go after a 500-ton asteroid and retrieve it and mine it. And they go through a calculation based on that, based on that one asteroid, that they say it would take $10,400 per kilogram to mine. And I looked at what they said, and they say that 500 tons would be a lot. And I can tell you a small mining op operation is really you run a 100-ton a processing plant. You're probably not really mining so well if you're not running about 100, ton 100 tons an hour. They're talking about only 500 tons total. So processing plants, small ones, on a world standard, are 500 tons an hour. It's still small. On a local miner's size, it's 100 tons an hour. They run them about 8 to 10 hours, and they shut them down, fix them, whatever, clean things out, run them, and start running them again, maybe crew them a second time and run some more. They run this material 500 tons in an they would run it five hours on a small a small scale plant. Can you build uh, the doomsday uh, planet eater uh, for a hundred tons an hour? Sure. They talk to us and tell us it would only cost uh, one point seven billion dollars. I think for that price, you're going to get the processing involved. It's not that much diff more difficult. It doesn't really matter. This, we can increase the costs by three on what we find actual is the actual actual costs on Earth and and speed. Quantity by hour. It, it, it's infant, It's only like a twenty-five thousand dollars to do that five hundred ton rock for its materials. None of which is wasted. And then you find out they also know when you read the articles, they know these asteroids have all kinds of different things, and it depends on the asteroid. They even have those that have hydrocarbons. And to me, that was a big one because now you have the capacity to do the things that you can't do just in a mineralization capacity. All the rock that had no mineral would just become concrete. In space, you have no weight. So, I mean, you have nothing to worry about. In space, you make stuff and construct stuff that has different strength capacities. Glass becomes like bulletproof. I can't remember what concrete does. It's not indestructible, but it's, it's very much different. And so you start to understand the costs of doing this are much less than what they're talking about. And we may have to develop some technology on construction. Their construction is based on, on 
aircraft carrier construction. I'm not so sure you're going to do that in space. I'm not so sure if I've got the uh, 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 this device called a Death Star. I need to worry about an alien if I've made that up and worry about its construction integrity versus a fight because no one's going to fight me. I am dominating. And so the only thing is, is, well, how do we do that? You couldn't, like, how do you make this thing? How big is the Death Star? They're saying how you make it. They're, they're giving us false numbers. But if you look and you have all the asteroids giving you everything you need and you have a, a doomsday machine absorbing all these asteroids that are threatening us and you're using those materials to build your Death Star or whatever else device is up there, you don't have to have men doing it. And what we have to have then is a way to do it without men but digitally and that brought up the idea of 3d 3d what 3d printers we're given the concept of a frame construction within the size of which we build things they even do that for houses you can only build a house that's the size of a frame so i started thinking well what would you do to remove the frame to get bigger you want to build a death star you can't build that frame it costs too much too much time waste of time how would you do it otherwise you got to get rid of the frame, folks. And so I'm, it's amazing how this stuff comes to the news. How do you get rid of the frame? Well, if I have an artillery, if I have robot drones, if I have robots that are all Neand organoid controlled intelligence. Remember in the Cylon Raider, they detuned the intelligence. The Cylon race said, we don't need these fighters to be really intelligent. We just need to have a lot of them. And we'll do kamikaze things, and they'll have enough brains to learn how to fight, and they'll learn what they can do. And if we they get destroyed, we'll take the brain and we'll stick it in another ship. There's a clone, and we'll make it. It'll it'll have all its lessons from before, and it'll become an even better fighter. Now you stick a Neon organoid brain uh, P on the top of this substrate that's got now a connection to run these uh, fighters on uh, more specific tasks of building a Death Star. Not operating it yet, but building it. You don't have to have men and women necessarily, but for changing out parts and things like that. Pretty simple. That we now have in the news. If this isn't good enough for us. Made in Space's Archinaut plots course to build spaceships in space. Now, they show this very large open warehouse, if you will, in space that they're building Something like a galactic, uh, Battlestar Galactica thing inside it. But guess what? That's a confinement of our mind. If I have a robot that's intelligent, that can work on a frame of reference without the frame in space because I'm floating, I don't have a size constraint. I now have the capacity to go out and get the minerals I need, even the hydrocarbons for whatever else I need, and also the water, whatever I might need, into a three-dimensional frameless printer. And I can do things with that printer now that I could never do on Earth or even with the manufacturing technology we've had up until the printer in, that we are shown today. I'm not constrained by size or material. In fact, as I told you before, these 3D printers, we probably already have them, that they just don't shoot out glue or ink. They, they, they actually, and then we've heard the sintering, they actually have the ability to print whatever they need. Whatever material it is comes out into the space at the atom, atomic level or whatever. And they wouldn't need a, a structure they can do like building houses, that they could actually build a frameless 3D printer in space that was not size constrained. We get the news today, they're building it. They're working on it now. It's called Archina. For those of you that are entomologically centered, Archi. Rulers, it's the it's the it's the it's the machine of the rulers, arco, arc over pow, overarching, the archinaut. It's a machine. They're going to build ships in space, folks. I'm looking at one that's showing us a frame. I'm saying that frame is irrelevant in space. You just have to give the machine a reference to move and build from. It's got a Neand organoid brain on a substrate that they already know since 2204 will run a, uh, a 20, an F-22 fighter. <laughs> well, how are they going to do all this? Where, where are we going to get the money, folks? That's all the only thing we're going to worry about, right? They're saying it costs so much. 
Oh, let's bring up the Solari report. Catherine Office of Austin Fitz and her focusing in on this $21 trillion that disappeared somehow. $21 trillion. When you go back to the first article and you find out that $1.7 billion is this 500-ton system that's going to go after one asteroid, do you think they could build one that actually can go after a whole lot of asteroids at once for a little bit more, and it won't even be a drop of the bucket of the $21 trillion they supposedly lost? You think the Arc, the Arc, Arkies are in control of this money that they can do this? All it takes is the seed money to start this. And then they don't need people. They can do this in secret. They have a few people, but they got those controlled like soldiers, just like the astronauts. As they look up quickly, see Frumpy, they print flesh now. Yes. I'm telling you, this is, uh, we, I, I was talking about this before, but now we have moved this hole up into space, and the United States is going to dominate. They're telling us this, folks. They're using all these different points that I've been telling you to be a threat. You wonder where the money comes from. There's $21 trillion missing. Once they get a seed system up, it starts to develop itself. The costs are minuscule compared to that now. It doesn't ta- take quintillions. It doesn't take 150 quadrillion. And then it only takes what it takes relative to the amount of machines intelligently working up there in a frameless 3D printer. It's, I mean, to me, it, it's fascinating. But when you're talking about who, let's go back to that. I got it right here. Study confirms most psychopaths live in Washington are the ones making this decision for us. It's not for us. I think this is a pretty good uh, way to go for the United States that wants to dominate. You're not a peaceful nation, you folks. You're dominators. You're oppressors. I keep telling you that the evidence of this all around is we're run by psychopaths. There, I think I see the technology that, that doesn't need men or women to do anything for the most part. A lot of it can be done. Well, look at Elon Musk, what he's doing with robots. They're moving that all into space. These people talking about going to Mars are not joking. There's technology on the horizon that removes the limitations of material, material science, and the limitation of, of space, the, the framing of it that I don't know, that I can't see in the future, what they're going to use for us on drones, neand-organoid-controlled drones that kill you, here on Earth, is the system of oppression they're building for the Galactic Imperial Federation. How's that? And we're seeing the evidence of its... I think it's a probability. I don't think that these mining operations are that costly once you get them working. I think you can collect up any asteroid you want for any material you want up there, and you don't cost anything to get it to you besides the processing. And gold is processed in this country at about $12 um, a ton, I think, if you want to talk about what the cost actually is for gold alone. Anyway, maybe a little conjecture, maybe a little fantasy, but is that really your future? Only that will tell us, right, if we make it there. But I think you have to be careful on letting the psychopaths rule. And we have to get engaged in order to make the constraints on all that. I think it's fantastic stuff, what I was talking about today and how this is all working out. But it's it's the psychopaths who have control. They have the purse string. They have the capacity. They've gone into places that we can't. And don't forget, these trillions were also based in derivatives that have no limit. They just make up the the the, the, the leverage funding that they needed, if they needed any more. As I said, seed funding, $21 trillion could go a long way to seed fund of operation that then is self-fulfilling, self, um, self-paying. Self, uh, p- if they need anything from space, they just drop it on your head. They just make a projectile that comes down and they deliver you the material that you need that you may not be able to get on the Earth. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said is uh, maybe inspirational and uh, awe-inspiring what man can do, but uh, look at the negatively uh, inspired reason for why he does it. Control the psychopaths. Uh, Grimner, thank you very much for what you do on Liberty Media to allow me to say all this and uh, help other people do it. And uh, again, Jules, I thank you for what you've done. And I don't know if UCY is down and I still see the feed, but uh, what you've done over there, thank you very much, uh, even though you're not doing that now. Uh, Terrestrial Broadcast, I appreciate that. Grammy Mary, thank you for the speaker. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, J.
Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass. <laughs>